Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea ESS-3C. It's on human impacts on Earth systems. When the Apollo 17 astronauts were leaving the Earth, they took the most famous image that was ever taken. It's called the Blue Marble. And when people viewed this in the 1970s, it changed them fundamentally. They, they finally had seen a picture of the Earth, and they saw that it wasn't infinite that changes we make to our Earth are going to be passed forward in time and on to future generations. And so humans have impacted and continue to impact the Earth. We're impacting all four of the spheres on our planet. So we're impacting the Earth itself or the geosphere. And so agriculture is incredibly important to us. It's how we grow our food. But if we're not taking care of the soil, we can get soil loss. If we're not rotating our crops, we can see soil loss like we saw during the Dust Bowl. Also, as we're mining, as we're digging up the metals, the minerals that we need, we're changing the surface of the planet, and it just doesn't come back on its own. We're also changing the water, the hydrosphere. So when we dam a river and change it into a reservoir, we're changing that natural path of the water, and we're also causing greater evaporation on that surface of the reservoir, so we're upsetting this whole water cycle. And as we move water to where we need it, so as we irrigate, we're changing the flow of those natural rivers, and lots of times we're bringing unintended consequences. We're bringing salt into areas, and that salt eventually can cause salination of the soil, and we're going to have less crops. We're also changing the atmosphere or the air itself. And so smog is caused by particles that we're moving into the air, but we're also putting invisible particles. We're putting greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, and that's increasing the temperature over time. And we're also changing the biosphere. We're changing the life on our planet. As we deforest the, the uh, rainforest, that, that life is not going to come back. As we overfish an area, the fish aren't going to come back. And so now we've created a non-renewable resource. And likewise, when we change our environment, we're changing areas like coral reefs. We're causing them, as we increase the temperature, to bleach. And as they do that, the whole food chain that's built upon that is going to fall down as well. And once a species goes extinct, it doesn't come back. So another thing we need to address is this idea of development over time. We have certain countries that are developed and certain countries that are developing. We have wealthy nations, and the United States happens to be one of those. We have a high GDP per capita, and, and that's just a measure of the wealth. But in a lot of countries, like in Africa, we're going to have lower wealth. Now, one thing that's interesting between this is that if you are a wealthy nation like we are, you're going to be consuming more of those natural resources. So this map almost looks identical. What it is is oil consumption per capita. And so the United States is consuming a lot of that oil. We're increasing the amount of fossil fuels we put into the atmosphere. But other countries are going to become developed as well. And so as China and India become developed and they have way more people than we do, it's going to put more stress on our planet. It's not all bad news. If we use our resources wisely, if we manage our resources, we're going to do OK. And so an example of that could be water pollution. Our water sources used to be awful. And that's because we were getting water from the rivers and then dumping sewer back into it. And so as we treat that sewer, as we treat that water as it flows out, we're going to decrease that water pollution. As we start to recycle a lot of our resources, as we recycle our aluminum and metals and plastic and all of that, then we don't have to dig it out of the, the earth again. And so now we've got a renewable resource. A great example of this is when I was young, ozone depletion was a really big deal. And so we'd been using chlorofluorocarbons, and what they were doing was reducing this protective ozone layer. And so we, as a country and other countries, started to reduce the amount of the use of these CFCs, and the ozone is starting to rebuild, and it's not going to be the threat that it was at one point. And so this idea is important, the idea of sustainability. If we look at the human population over the last 10,000 years, we see an exponential growth. We see an explosion of people on our planet. We now exceed 7 billion people on our planet, and so we're going to have to make that sustainable. We're going to have to make sure that the resources we have on our planet will last through future generations. And the scientists are able to see what's happening into the future, and the engineers are going to be able to design sustainable systems over time. So how do you teach this? Well, in the lower elementary grades, you want students to understand that our life, if we want to have to a comfortable life, we are going to affect the world. We're going to infect the environment. 
And if we don't want to affect it in a negative way, we can do things like reduce, reuse, and recycle. And if we do that, we're still going to impact the world. All humans impact the world, but we're going to reduce that effect. As we move into the upper elementary grades, we want to start talking about the impacts humans are having on our planet, be it the land, the water, the air, and the biosphere, or the life on our planet. We also want them to understand that if we're wise in our management of these resources, we can reduce our impact. So sewer treatment's a great example of that. In the future, we'll probably have to regulate what we're putting into the air, just like we regulated what we're putting into the water. There's not a lot of regulation on greenhouse gases across the world and we're probably going to have to come to grips with that. Also we need to talk about extinction, that once species are gone, they're gone forever and they're not going to come back. And as we see increasing in developing nations and as we start to consume more and more and more, we're going to have to be equitable in the amount of resources that we're consuming and the impacts that we're having on our planet. And then as you move into high school, you really want to talk about this term sustainability. The population has increased, will continue to increase. We have just a, a set number of resources on our planet. So we're going to have to start listening to scientists and we're going to start creating engineers and scientists so they can create a sustainable future. And if we don't, we're going to have some negative consequences. And I hope that was helpful.